Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Blanche SB, and we're going with another Serpents 3 introductory video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the interface nodes and the program execution nodes, and the special kind of sockets that they have compared to our data sockets. Let's jump right in. I think it's easy to explain interfaces first, and I've got things split up into um, different sections here. Most of the things on your interface deal with like user interface, we call it UI. And um, things like the add-on preferences show up on the UI. You have pie menus that show up on your user interface. You have menus that you can select things from. You have panels. So like your end panel would be a panel where you select properties and you turn on things and make operation happen. But without the interface, there's no way for the user to be able to turn things on unless they use the search menu and go pick something. But even the search menu is an interface. So we use the interface all over Blender, so it's important you understand a little bit about interfaces. All the interface nodes, you can go to your add menu, and they're going to be found in the interface section. And they all have a diamond shaped socket with a yellow fill. The yellow is letting you know that they are for the interface, and they cannot be used for anything else but for other interface nodes. So if it has a yellow socket, it's going to connect to another node with a yellow socket. Now we have input nodes. These are like the starting nodes where everything starts from. And menus, panels, preferences, they're the interfaces that, they're like a class where you're registering everything on that. And so that's where you're gonna have your starting point for your UI. Uh, the most common ones that I like to share about are panels. And so as you drag out from a panel, you'll connect to another node that has a socket on the left-hand side. And these are intermediary nodes because they have a socket on both the left and on the right. A beginning node only has a socket coming out of the right side. So there's no interface to tie into on the left. So a row would be making it available for you to put multiple items and have them on the same row. And an example of this would be like these two icons here. They're sharing a row together. And then these things here, they're all sharing a column. They're all coming downwards. You have a split, which would cause, like this is, this is probably a good way of describing a split. You have one thing that takes up a little amount of room, and you have another thing that takes up more room. And you want them to live in the same space. Uh, this one would be split with more percentage or more factor on um, this one compared to this one. And all these intermediary nodes, they can connect to another intermediary node if you like. So you can stack these, like a column can go after a row, and so on and so forth. And you have ending nodes as well, and these are typically things like separators to give spaces, uh, like a white space between two labels. You have buttons, and a button would call an operator. So like this is an operator here. When I click on this, you're gonna use like a BPI ops operation, and it's gonna tell Blender you're gonna go do something. Labels are just, um, they give information on the UI. They don't, they don't do anything special other than help somebody read something. You have uh, copy menus and copy panels, and there, there are tons and tons of other interface nodes, but these are, these are all representative nodes that end like stuff on the interface, and that's it. That's all that's, there's nothing else going to be added beyond that item. And then you move on to the next item on the interface. So just to give an example of interfaces, I'm going to open up this section here, and I've got my panel node here. And if I put on a row, I can add in the label. And notice how that's the first thing that shows up. And if I do another thing on top of that, it's like a button, they're tying together on the same row. Now, if I wanted to put them on a column instead, I can do that. They show up as two items on the same column. When I align them, it causes them to hug together. And that's, that's how you would build an interface. And then when I click my button, I would be calling a custom operator that I've got down low that would be executing a program. So let's go ahead and go into the execution. So when I click a button like this, I need an operator tied to that button. And then the operators and other program execution nodes, they've got diamond sockets as well, but they have a white fill. 
and you cannot interchange white fill with yellow fill. When you connect them together, you're going to get red. That's letting you know, hey, this is, this is not, this is not mesh. It's not going to work. And you're going to have errors. And just like we had on our interface, we have beginning nodes. So examples of these would be like a function. You're defining a function and you're having things happen inside that function. A script node will, is where you tie scripts, like registering custom scripts that you have built outside of Blender or in a script file. You have function execution, um, which is just the same as the function below here. So I just have that duplicated. Let me get rid of that one. Let's go to operator. So operators are tied to buttons on the interface. And you can call and run other types of code. But this is, this is a specific type of node that you would use and associate with that button. So I have custom operator listed here. And when I get my button, I want to make sure I'm on custom. I go pick my node graph, and I would pick my custom operator. And now this button is tied to that operator. When I click that, it's going to do whatever is tied onto the execution of this operator. Now we have intermediary nodes as well for functions. Um, you have run functions. That would that'd be calling a function. So here you're defining it and saying everything that it would do. And a run function, you would, you would tie in from a beginner node into a node like this. And then this operator would go call this function to run. You also have property functions, and we'll talk more about those in future videos. We have run operators. So you can actually have a function, instead of a button on the UI, you could have a function call the operator instead. We also have loops as an intermediary node, and a loop um, would repeat some action based on items in a list or items in a Blender style data collection. The if else node is another intermediary node, and it has true and false outputs along with continue. So the Boolean condition when it's true, would execute out the true. When it's false, it would only execute out of the false. Regardless of what's happening with true and false, it allows you to continue on if you'd like to the next item. Now for a for loop, if you want to cancel the loop early, you can break it. And so this would be an ending node. We would want to stop the for loop from happening. Another example of an ending node would be a function return. We want to return our function, and typically we'll return some kind of data. Right, so like a, maybe we want to return a special string once the function is done. And nodes that are often commonly used are print nodes. So the easiest way to do this is to show an example of printing. So when I run my operator and I print, it will say, hey, default cube, goodbye. Right, and what's nice about the print nodes is they're really handy to help you troubleshoot. So you can throw print nodes in the middle of your code. And Serpents 3 now has the printing happening on the node, but it also shows up in the console. I clear the console out. And when I click my button, see I have goodbye default cube showing up in the console as well. So I made a typo. That's all right. So you can clear your print node by clicking the trash icon. You can, every time you print it, it'll show you how many times it printed. So that way, if it's in a for loop or something, you know how many times that loop ran. So that's the general overview of the interface and program execution nodes. And you're going to be using those a lot as you program your add-on. And uh, as we go on in the next videos, we'll be making basic usage of building things like panels and menus. So I look forward to getting into those with you, and we'll catch you on the next one.